So sometimes pretend sleep is almost as good as real sleep. So well, so good that it actually turns into real sleep. Um, sometimes a simulation is almost like real life in the sense that uh, we can learn things about how we, we can observe ourselves and we can learn things about how we might uh, behave and feel in real life that we're not necessarily always thinking about in real life. So I think that's the value to uh, a simulation. Uh, certainly there are limitations, um, and uh, we can think about those and talk about those. Certainly uh, it's a simulation that was not designed um, or uh, was not designed with a pandemic in mind, so we will be making some modifications. Uh, but uh, basically, the simulation will, uh, ask, will, will divide you into two groups. Each group has its own culture, alpha culture and beta culture. So alpha culture, people will come with me, We'll spend about half an hour, and I'll review all of the values, behaviors, and practices of alpha culture. And we'll learn those, and we'll practice those. And Dr. Johnson will be with the beta culture, doing the same thing. And after we've kind of practiced our cultures for a while, we will then, uh, each group will send a visitor to visit the other culture and observe and learn something about that culture and bring back that information to their home culture. And then we'll have three rounds, at least three rounds, of visitors from each culture who will visit the other culture. And rather than just be observers, they, they will also engage and interact with the culture. And those rounds, those visits, will be approximately five or six minutes, maybe more or less. And each time you come back to your home culture, you'll learn a little bit more about the other culture. And so we will be interacting and visiting and coming back and learning and debriefing and then, at a certain point, we will end the simulation. Depending on how the weather is, we may stay outside and do a debrief session on the simulation, or we might come back in here and do the debrief. Uh, you know, climbing trees yep. and uh, As they said, yeah. Oh, your father. Yep. 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 Yep
Betas, you need to use your trading language or you will lose all of your cards. Okay. Ra. Ka. Yellow. Red. And I get Ka. 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 Bait is use your language. Get those cards. Tell me a little bit about your male cousins. Well, you know, I would love to hear about his life, but you know, would you like to buy? Thank you. Would you like to play? Would you like to play? Well, my brother actually is into wrestling now. Oh, wonderful. I'm fantastic. Would you like to play? Yeah. Yeah, he wants to be a full-time career. Impressive. Would you like to play? Not like my granddaughter. Would you like to play? Well, it's a noble profession. That's true. It really is. Table trading? My grandfather is How did you win? How did your father win? I'm so glad you do I ever win? No. Why does he always win? No. Do you ever win? No. Do you ever win? No. 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 Betas, can you give me some words to describe the outfits? Friendly. Friendly? But also rude. Friendly, but also rude, okay. Male dominated. Male -dominated? Other words. Confusing. Confusing. <laughs> Animated. Focused on what you do for work. Focused on what on, on your occupation. Focused on your son, your uncle, like father. Focused on, on male relatives. Anything else? Say that again. Their game isn't a winning game? Okay, so you don't have to try to win. Is that another way to say that they don't have to work hard or make effort? Make an effort? Okay. That's a conversation. Um, Alphins, 
What are some words that describe the Batons? What? Confusing. One track minded. One track minded. Okay. Aggressive. Awkward. Awkward. Not very social. Not affectionate? Goal oriented? What's their relationship to winning? Okay. So, Baytons, when you visited the Alpha culture, how did the Alphas appear to you? Okay. So, proper. Say more about that. They just stood so tall and straight and waved their arms the same kind of way. Use like fancy words that don't mean anything. <laughs> Those outfits. <laughs> they always stand with hands in a circle. Always stand in a circle, okay. They're slow. <laughs> like in their, the way they speak. Is that like methodical? I don't know what I'm thinking about. <laughs> other, um, other ways that you experienced the alpha culture, or anything to add, babies? It kind of seems like they thought they were better than us, like when we go over and then first they're friendly and they try to play with them, and then they thought we were just like a pro team. Is there something? Female, but I don't think I don't know. There's something with the male female, but I'm. Were, weren't you a male when you went? Yeah, I feel like I when I tried to talk to them, I don't know if that was why I was asked to leave. You think you you you, you were asked to leave because you were a male? Because I was a male who tried to start the game with a woman. Okay. Okay. Maybe that. Yes. Um. I only observed when I dressed them out, but when they came to the U.S., they talked about the first trip in Japan, and I'm pretty sure you were with them. When they came to visit you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Alphans, how did the Batons appear to you when they came to visit you? interjecting in a conversation without being aware of them. Mm -hmm. Swarmed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did Kate like her? <laughs> Non-responsive. Non-responsive? Say more. Said, well, just try to engage in conversation. Socialize with them and you know just do a lot of thrusting of their cards out, but <laughs> no conversation, no nothing to nothing to learn about them. Or their father. <laughs> <laughs> the last couple of groups were trying to figure out how to win mm. the game and how to play the game. So I mean, yeah, yeah. Have to learn their more learn about, about winning and try to figure out the game. Baytons, can you talk about your thoughts and feelings when you visited the Alphas? I was so confused. 
seemed to really, really wanted to win. <laughs> so I tried really hard, but anything I tried, nothing worked. I just got strange looks, and I, I lost. So was confusion the main feeling? Uh, frustration. Frustration. Left out, exclusion, is excluded. Other feelings for Baytons? Alphins, what were your thoughts and feelings when you visited the Beta culture? I think they weren't very friendly. Not very inviting. But how did they make yeah. Oh, how do I make me feel? Uh, I don't know, excluded. They were like really sad. People panicked. Yeah. Panicked. Say more. Didn't know how to interact or engage, and they were just yelling words that I didn't know at me, and I was just trying to ask them about their fathers, and yeah, didn't get an answer. Just a lot of walkers and gawkers. <laughs> Although I thought I was getting somewhere, but I don't think I did. <laughs> For both Alphans and Baytons, were there any other feelings that haven't already been expressed? Okay. Um, can I have an Alpha member explain the Beta culture? How about Frank? Okay. <clears throat> I think that the beta culture is goal and winning driven. And they don't seem to want to talk to each other or to any of the alphas we visited. And they just wanted to take our cards and win. That's how I would describe it. Are there any alphas that would add to that? Were you able, I'm, I'm curious, um, and on the comment that you made, do you feel like you understood what their, excuse me, please leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come back, come back. <laughs> Sometimes professors exclude each other too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, so feelings, general feelings of exclusion and um, kind of bewilderment. Okay. Uh, can I have a beta member explain the alpha culture? Okay. Would anyone, any betas add to that? They were just really friendly. They wanted to invite you in. I was just observing. Um, but they wanted you to play this game, but it only seemed like you would play this game and it was over. Like you, there was always the person talking one. So the game really isn't a game. It's a practice that had a different meaning. Yes? It's kind of like they're doing 
Okay. I just want to say the dating show has really been in the TV right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have an alpha member who's not Frank explain the alpha culture? What's your name again? Brendan. Uh, Brendan, why don't uh, you? Uh, so, well, this is different, obviously, with COVID, but the alpha cu uh, culture is a very physical culture. So, uh, we like to welcome each other by physical contact, which is good to do. So that's why we were flailing our arms around. Um, also, a very male-driven culture. So. Um, any conversation starter had to be about talking about your male relatives and how and how, um, how great they are. And uh, females met, uh, had to be invited into conversations by males. So um, if we were staying off, it's just because you had to be invited in, um, mostly by our patriarch, Frank. So we made Francesca our patriarch. And uh, the game we were playing was it was involved three cards. One card was to insult you. So if any time you came up to us to say anything and you did start talking about your male relatives, we could just insult you by showing it or saying something to stand off. Women also had to be invited to the conversation. So if you were a male, we were friendly to you because we are a male driven culture. If you were a female coming in, uh, we were standoffish or would insult you. Um, the other two cards we flipped back and forth and Whoever initiated the, the cards, you flip over. I think it was the timber and the whatever. limber and the tipper. Uh, and if you flipped over and, and someone matched you, you would get a token. Which we also didn't have tokens, but you would you would all match together and get tokens. If the person who flipped over, uh, you didn't match their card, you would lose. And women basically always lost if they if they matched or did not have the same card. And Frank always won. So if you ever saw Francesca playing against somebody else and everybody matched her, she would still win. Yes, uh, it's very important in our culture, though. It's, it, it's not about the game and it's not about winning. So if you play the game and then take off after that, that's, that's fairly offensive because that's indicating that you, you just want to win. So after engaging in a game, you start uh, discussing mutual interests, make sure that you know, you're know conversing and connecting with each other. Thank you. Can I have a beta member explain the beta culture? Well, we really wanted to wear really close to our training and be the best trainers. Um, our goal was to get um, numbers one through seven I want to pause for a moment and say that I just realized that I'm out of time. And, um, but uh, I wasn't aware of it because it's been such a big I want to pass, pass the discussion on to Professor Johnston and say that I think that this, um, this simulation is useful in thinking about those feelings of exclusion and inclusion that we experience every day when we're outsiders or every time that we're outsiders in a particular culture. The first time that we end, we, we, we we visit this campus where we're newcomers. We're trying to figure out what's this, what's this place about? What's this program about? What are the rules? Can I get over, can I, can I really get over on this professor? Are they gonna let me slide if I 
submit the assignment late, uh, et cetera. Um, and it brings up those feelings that we all experience when we're excluded, when we're kind of bewildered about with why are these people being so damn sexist and exclusionary? Or why are they so focused on this game or on winning? And so these these are uh, these these make made up cultures certainly have elements of many cultures in the world that we uh, we could uh, some of us identify with, some of us identify with, and some of us reject and seek to undo in our in our lives. So as educators. This is a valuable uh, resource to think about the ouches and the oops, and to think about how this prepares you or helps to prepare you better to engage with students, with families, with colleagues, with community members, in schools and the communities that they're serving, and understand that culture is a valuable resource and it's a resource that is, um, that, that depending on the context, is not equally valued. And that, there, that in every setting, there are dominant culture, that there are dominant cultural values and practices and behaviors, and there are subdominant that might be marginalized or rejected, or they might get the stiffer. And that as teachers, as Paulo Freire wrote in his book, Teachers as Cultural Workers, we are constantly engaging in cultural practice, in practices that, that reinforce, that affirm, as in Sonia Nieto's affirming diversity, or marginalize or reproduce inequality and discrimination often unintentionally, but nonetheless, it's reproducing inequality and power, power dynamics that convey to people that you do not belong, or that you are less than, or that your life, your work, your community, your language doesn't matter as much as mine, or the dominant culture. So I think that this, this simulation brings up, for me, all of those themes. And um, I hope that they'll resonate for you throughout this class, that they'll give you clarity on how you want to proceed in developing your skills to constantly be able to engage and broker culture and identity in the classroom, in the school, and in the community in ways that, that reflect humility, cultural humility, that allow people to identify what it is about them that they want to emphasize, as opposed to what I see or what I choose to emphasize or what my colleagues, or the school, or the label of special education, or of ADHD, et cetera, is, is, um, is prompting me to, to kind of understand or assume about a person. So I want to thank you all for your engagement. I apologize for my abrupt departure. But I wish you